Well, I listened to you all yet again. I bought even more of your recommendations, and uh, all I can say is you do not disappoint me one bit. Today's video should be a lot of fun. I'm going to be sharing with you all of my thoughts on the products that you all recommended. We are heavy on the Korean skincare in today's video, and I also have some products from Dermatology. There are timestamps in the description box below, as well as links to the products, but I am absolutely ready to get into today's video, and I want to start with the number one recommended product that I hadn't tried so far which is none other than the Iliun Ceramide Ato Concentrate Cream. In case you wanted confirmation of just how nerdy this channel is, with all of your recommendations, I plugged them all into a spreadsheet, and yes, this was the, uh, this one, I can't remember how many people recommended it, but it was a lot. Now, a few things to say about this before we start. So, first of all, I did notice that this was very recently reformulated. I do have the reformulated version, and I will not know how it compares to the old one. So uh, knowing that in advance, I'm also going to tell you I did go into this product with kind of surprisingly low expectations. <laughs> yeah, I know, in spite of me having just sat here and said this was one of the most recommended products, I just didn't expect much, and I'll tell you why. This product is currently $13 on the Stylevana website for 200 milliliters, which is 6.76 fluid ounces of product. Okay, under $2 an ounce for moisturizer that clearly can be used on either the face or body. Listen, we have a $90 moisturizer behind me that I happen to love. So, you know, I just, I, I was just thinking, well, maybe it's going to be fine. A ceramide product for face and body is probably going to be like the CeraVe moisturizing cream, right? That was what I was thinking in my head. Well, I got this in and... <laughs> A very good product. <laughs> okay, so get this. This is a very, very thick product. <laughs> if you can't tell, it's so thick that, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be for everybody, but if you do have, you know, any kind of irritation on your skin, if you're very dry, this kind of texture is probably what you want. Probably going to be a night cream for both of us. I certainly use this as a night cream, but just look, watch how it blends out. Watch this. Look at how thick it is. They've actually encapsulated that ceramide technology, so there's these little tiny uh, kind of balls in the product that burst open as you massage it into your skin. So you're getting this incredible delivery system of those ceramides in this incredibly thick formula that is still mineral oil free, if that's something that you are interested in avoiding. I mean, look at that. Look how thick it is. <laughs> But as any of you with dry or irritation-prone skin know, that's exactly what you look for in a moisturizer. And the thing is, it's actually still a beautiful texture. You know how when you go to buff in something like the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream, you kind of got to buff for nine hours of your day? But there we go, fully massaged into my skin, and it just looks amazing. My skin feels incredibly nourished when I use this product. Now, worth noting that since I did say this is the reformulation, apparently they added in some rosemary extract, not the essential oil, which does give it a light smell. It's very faint. I think most people will be just fine with that, but if you're very sensitive, that, that is unfortunate. I see why some people are upset about this reformulation, but again, I don't have the old one to compare it to, so for me, I feel like I just bought a product that really shocked me. Let me make sure I'm clear that this is a product that you will feel on your skin. That's a kind of a characteristic of a very occlusive product. So know that in advance, you will feel it. But again, that's exactly what you're looking for if you are looking for a reparative, restorative product. I've just also never seen one so well done in this price point. Uh, it's... <laughs> Thank you for the recommendation. It is amazing. Now, you all may remember this from just about a month ago. I had uh, hauled the Pyung Kang Yul Calming Moisture Barrier Cream. So many of you said you have to buy the Calming Moisture Repair Balm. So I did. I bought this from iHerb, which, by the way, is another good place to get skincare products from, Korean skincare products from. Oh, they have such fast shipping. Even though I don't even understand their shipping service, it's Sonic or something? 
It's good to know that poor little hedgehog is no longer unemployed. I've been worried about him since Sega went down. I should be more sorry for that than I am. Anyway, let me tell you about this product. So you all were very right. You were so right. What I was disappointed in with the Moisture Cream is that it feels very, very lightweight. This is absolutely the heavy counterpart to it. It's, it's night and day. <laughs> And maybe that's fitting because I can see this being the night product and that one for during the day. But the thing is, since I'm somebody that does have dry skin, uh, you can give me night creams to wear during the day. They, those of you with dry skin, have you had this experience of trying a product that is labeled a night cream, but you try it and you're thinking, this is a night cream? Maybe for oily skin. Yeah, you won't have that with this. This is actually very hefty, very occlusive. It's... A very nice product but I am gonna tell you honestly the the time frame in trying this as well as the Iliune this is one ounce of product this is one ounce so I like it but I think I'm much more likely to repurchase if I ever run out of the Iliune cream it's really nice it's just small I mean you'll probably see it in an empty soon because I will use it I do like it but yeah one ounce it's small Let's move on to talking about these two very, very hyped products. This is the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. I got the mini size of the liquid version, and then I bought the full size of the mist. Really quickly before I talk about these, so mine say Cream Skin Refiner. I purchased these in early December. I did notice on the Sephora website the name has changed, so if you are planning to shop the VIB sale, I do believe the Cream Skin Refiner is the exact same as the Cream Skin Toner and Moisturizer, as they're calling it now. I did compare the ingredients list on my box to other boxes that people had posted with the new name. It's the same ingredients list. Basically, my assumption is that they changed the name to make it more clear to especially Americans. I mean, a lot of Americans might walk into Sephora and go, what's a refiner? But a toner and moisturizer, that's pretty clear, right? It's, I think it's a good name change. But let me tell you all about my thoughts on this product, why I bought the mist version in the full size. Let's, let's have a full chat about what the heck this product is. So uh, first of all, I see the hype in this. I see the hype. I see why it got so popular. It was really popular at that exact same time where uh, the glass skin effect was trending. Whoa, this product really gives you that. If you desire for people to look at you and question whether you are a human or a champagne flute, this product will help you achieve that. And this new name change, this toner and moisturizer, again, it's perfect because I would say this is actually a moisturizing toner. It is incredibly moisturizing on your skin. It's a product where, uh, you know how when you're doing your skincare routine, especially if you have dry skin, you know how at certain points you uh, can feel what comes next because of where your skin is this is a product where if you spray your skin immediately after toning you just or after cleansing rather you just feel like oh I'm, I'm good my skincare routine is done so much so that I wouldn't even be surprised for people that have oily skin if you can just spray this on after you cleanse and you know add your sunscreen and you're done so yeah, I see the hype, but let me tell you why I personally was so late to this game and why I kind of had a sneaking suspicion that I wouldn't love this product. It's because of the way I use skincare. It's because of the way I format my own skincare routine that even though I see the hype, it's not a, an immediate favorite for me. See, in my routine, I use my anti-acne cleanser, right? My benzoyl peroxide cleanser, then I use a hydrating product to deliver hydration into my dry skin. Then I go in with a serum that often targets my acne issues, and then I'll go in with an occlusive. The thing about this type of product, all of these milky toners I've ever tried, I get it, I see the appeal, but where do you put that in that routine? It's a struggle for me. There is a place I can use these and that is as a refresher through the day. <laughs> Sorry, I just had this internal conversation with myself. Don't spray it on your skin right now. It's a great refresher, but I don't like pairing it with makeup at all just because it is so moisturizing that when I touch up over makeup, 
Uh, if my mascara is flaking at all, it's not going to flake to the floor. It's going to flake right onto my skin and stay all day. So it's not actually the best product for people that wear makeup, but it's a great product if you don't. Or it's great for people that wear makeup and use it within their skincare routine. So uh, again, the reason why I bought the mist and not the liquid version is because I did expect that. I I've experienced this before with this type of product. Uh, and I wanted to address one more thing before I move on from this product. I was reading through a lot of Sephora reviews on this product and I noticed that a lot of people are uh, pretty opposed to the mist. So the mist is, let's see, four flu four fluid ounces. What are y'all upset about? Oh, now I see. Okay, so my mist that I bought from Stylevana was four fluid ounces for actually, I think I paid about 13 for this. On the Sephora website, the mist version is 2.5 ounces for $27, and the liquid version is five ounces for $33. So if you want some light entertainment for the day, read through the reviews. A lot of people are very irritated because it seems to be the exact same product. Why is it so much more expensive in the mist version? I'm going to tell you why I think it is more expensive in the mist version. So products are not really made based on how much they cost. At least that's, that's only a small portion of how pricing is determined. There's actually many other factors, you know, the science that goes into it, you obviously have to pay for that. Uh, does it have somebody's name attached to it? Celebrity skincare, you have to pay for that. But one of the big factors is how long it takes people to use a product. And with the, the liquid version of this, if you pour it into a cotton pad, that cotton pad absorbs so much of this product. If you just pour it into your hands, it drips through your hands. It's, it's quite a, a liquidy product. So I felt like I was gonna waste more of this product, whereas when it's in mist format, you don't waste as much. So you kind of end up getting, uh, you know, the, the same length of time from that product just because you're not wasting it. This makes me wonder something though. Can you buy the liquid and put it in a spray bottle? I don't think you can, yeah, you can't open the spray bottle they have, but I have extra spray bottles. Wanna find out? All right, so I have just poured the liquid version into this bottle right here. Oh, that works. Given that we just talked about the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner Mist, let's move on next to talking about the D'Alba First Spray Serum. So this for me is yet another product where I did not like it in my skincare routine. This is probably quite predictable at this point, but I do like it throughout the day. It, again, like the Sioris Mists, it has your oily layer and then your watery layer, but I will actually say this one kind of holds these the layers together more once you shake it, it's, it's easier to work with than the Sioris versions. I will say I kind of feel perplexed about the popularity of this product, even though I do like it myself, so I get it. I'm surprised because it's quite a scented product. It does have some essential oil ingredients. It has some alcohol in it. So I kind of, I suspect with this one, I feel like this might actually be for those of you who, you know, don't have a difficult skin type and who do wear makeup. It is quite nice over makeup. And for what it's worth, I mean, it does have really nice ingredients. We have some of my, my beloved bifida ferment in here. We have some niacinamide. It's some avocado oil in here. It's a, a nice formula, but definitely one where, you know, I, I would be cautious if you do have a sensitive skin type. Granted, you're not using a lot of product. So yeah, it's, yeah, I'm still kind of perplexed by this one admittedly, but I do also like it. And then I also bought a mini of the Hamish All Clean Green Foam. So many of you recommended this to me as a much more gentle Korean cleanser. This is something I've talked about so much on this channel. I have noticed that a lot of Korean cleansers feel stripping in comparison to even American drugstore products, drugstore cleansers. Um, and you all are right. This one is definitely not as harsh. They say it has a low pH, but, but alas, uh, I, I don't think the low pH tells the full story. I think it, you know, obviously has to do with the surfactants used as well and the overall formula. I'm still gonna say, even though this is more gentle, 
it is still a little tiny bit too stripping for my personal preference. And I think that oddly enough, for as much as I, I rave about Korean skincare and you absolutely should try certain products, my goodness, I think it is more difficult to find a Korean cleanser. It may actually just be personal preference for people in Korea. I was reading about that not too long ago. They may just prefer more of that uh, foaming type of sensation. So there's uh, there are a few Korean cleansers I would recommend. The new Beauty of Joseon one is amazing. I like the Sioris Cream Cleanser. Uh, and yes, this is more gentle, but I would still recommend plenty of US cleansers over this. And then my last Korean product for this video, this one is actually more of people have requested my thoughts on it than people have recommended it. So I grabbed this as my free product from Yes Style in exchange for a review, so this was gifted to me. It is the Hydrate Me Micro Tension Cream from Make Prim. Make Prim is really branching out these days. I mean, for years I thought of them as only a sunscreen brand, but I really liked the essence that I tried from them, so I was pretty excited about this one. But I have to say, I was actually floored when I first opened this because this is a very scented product. Very scented. I've talked about this before though. I had this expectation in my head when I first started getting into Korean skincare that it's all fragrance free. It is definitely not. There is plenty of scented options on the Korean skincare market. This is one of them. But if that works for you, you are certainly allowed to like that. And what's very interesting about this, they've accomplished their goals here. The product is called Hydrate Me. And you know what? It is a hydrating moisturizer. You know how I was just talking last week about the pharmacy pharmacy occlusive moisturizer or earlier in this video the Iliun and the Pyongkang Yule those both feel like they sit on the surface of your skin and lock in all of your skincare routine this one when you apply this to your skin it feels like it just kind of starts running deeper into your skin once you've applied it I know some of you know what I'm talking about it, it feels like it really does absorb as opposed to sitting on the surface of your skin. So I think that this really could have a great place for many people. If you, you know, want to really simplify your skincare routine, you may want to look for more hydrating moisturizers. Again, not going to be my absolute ideal because as I talked about, I have all of these different steps that all serve a very specific function. But alas, even though it's not, uh, you know, uh, ideal for my own routine, I do think they did a surprisingly good job on this product. Again, though, more for people who do not have a lot of sensitivities or allergies. And then I want to end this video with a few products from Dermatology, which I've talked about before. They actually gifted me these a while back, but uh, when I made my dupes video, quite a few of you said, Oh, you have to get to using the vitamin C, E, and F because it will oxidize. So you can probably see it's got some uh, uh, condensation on it right now. It's been in my skincare fridge. You all were right. I'm very glad that I opened it and got into this product because I can see it is one of those where I do need to use it up. But what a great additional alternative to the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. I mean, this is why it's really hard for me to say that is a must have for anybody. This too is a 15% L-ascorbic acid formula that is also stabilized with vitamin E and ferulic acid. It also contains a little bit of peptide ingredients. And by the way, you've simply got to take the time to compare the ingredients list on this to the Dr. Lara Devgan vitamin C on the Zavora website. You've just got to do it. You just got to. And what's really nice about dermatology is that they do run such good deals. They just had a recent 30% off. I've posted on my Instagram before about 50% off deals. So there are deals to be found with this brand that really isn't too expensive to start with. The other product I've been using is the Needleless Serum. This is, I think, one of their most popular products, if not their number one bestseller. Peptides, ceramides, niacinamide. I think what... What is so nice about, you know, if you're using products like The Ordinary, which don't get me wrong, are wonderful for their peptide formulas. What's nice about these 
mid-range products. Now we're actually we're actually upgrading in the price here. What is nice about this price range is that you only need one product to accomplish what several of the ordinary products would give you. You know, it, it is really nice to see all of these ingredients in one formula that is a very effective formula. The peptides used in this product are the signaling type, signaling to your body to create more collagen, which is how they're able to smooth the skin. Once you have more collagen production, you will see a smoothing effect. So yeah, it's an incredible well done serum watch for the deals if you fall in love with the brand and I wanted to yet again mention a product I've already talked about the universal tinted moisturizer SPF 46 I almost talked about this as a potential dupe in my Tatcha the new Tatcha sunscreen video However, I ended up not because I thought, oh, it's just not gonna be close enough to a dupe but it is another one of those alternatives while it doesn't apply quite the same, I think what I think the reason I was making this connection is my head is because it has a similar cosmetic elegance to it in applying it. It's just a really easy to apply sunscreen. It does have that tint to it, which initially I thought might be too skin tone, one kind of skin tone, but at the same time, I feel like it actually does potentially just uh, kind of cancel out the white color of the zinc oxide in here. But speaking of filters, that's the other main reason why it's not a, a good dupe. That's not a good word to describe the uh, comparison between this and the Tatcha. It does contain chemical filters. But guess what? It's actually a chemical filter that my skin gets along with really well. It is octanoxate, which turns out to be one of the least irritating chemical filter options out there, especially if you're an American. Yeah. But that's it, my friends. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and feel free to keep those recommendations coming. So you've probably figured out on this channel, I do uh, buy things and test them for a while before I actually get around to reviewing them. So so my latest order includes quite a few of your recommendations. I bought the Benton Fermentation Eye Cream. I bought uh, the new Pyung Kang Yul Black Tea. You saw that on Instagram. I bought the Pyung Kang Yul Ato sun, sun Gel. But that's all we have for today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.